Okay, so you want to check for duplicates across two worksheets. In my scenario, I've got two booking systems and I want to check that names haven't been duplicated across the two systems. So I've got system one on the bookings one sheet and system two on the bookings two sheet. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. One is with conditional formatting. So you can see these cells with a color background indicate that the names are duplicated on this sheet. I'll also show you another method you may prefer, and that is a separate column that just states yes if the name is duplicated on the other sheet. Okay, let's get going. So I'm gonna start off with this column that states yes if the name is duplicated. Now the function we're gonna use in this column is called countIf. COUNTIF counts how many times a specific value appears in a specified range. So in the first instance, we want to count how many times this name here appears in the bookings to sheet. So our range is the range of names on the bookings to sheet. So we click on that sheet tab down there, and then we select all the names. Now, if you look in the formula bar, you can see the formula as we currently have it and it says bookings to A2 to A23. Now I need to lock that range reference and I do that by pressing the F4 key on my keyboard. If F4 doesn't work for you, type the dollars in as you see them there. And the reason I'm locking that range reference is so that it doesn't change when I copy the formula down the bookings one sheet. Now after that range reference, I need a comma and then I need to return back to the bookings one sheet. And then I need to select the name that I'm counting within that bookings to sheet. That's the first name here. Close the bracket and press enter. And you can see that Marvel's name doesn't appear anywhere in that other sheet. Now, if I copy this formula down by double clicking on that green square there, wherever I see a value that isn't equal to zero, I know I've got a duplicate. So for example, Joyce apparently appears on the other sheet. Let's see if that's true. There she is. Now I don't really want zeros and ones here. I want yeses if there is a duplicate and a blank cell if there isn't. Now to do that, I need to make a logical test in the first instance. So I'm gonna say, is the count if result greater than zero? So I press enter and then copy this down. And you see, I get trues and falses. True if a duplicate was found in the bookings two sheet. Then I can put this within the if function. So I currently have my logical test, comma, and the value of true would be yes. Now yes is a text value, so it needs to be in speech marks, comma. And if there isn't a duplicate, I just want an empty cell. So an empty text string, I specify with two speech marks, nothing in between. Close the bracket, press enter, and then I just copy down this formula. Now let's move on to the conditional formatting. Now, most of the work is done for the conditional formatting. We can borrow the logical test that we have here within our if formula. So there is our logical test. Does the count if return a value that is greater than zero? So I'm gonna copy that portion of the formula, press enter. Then I'm gonna select all these names, go to conditional formatting, new rule and then i'm going to select user formula to determine which cells to format type in equals in this little box down here and then paste in my formula so formulas that you use for conditional formatting must be logical tests so they must return a true or false value well we know that's exactly what we've got here and what we can do is then specify a format so we go to the format button here choose a background color and click on OK. Click on OK again, and we get the color backgrounds on the duplicated names. Now, just a point of interest here, if I go back into the conditional formatting, and to do that, I go to conditional formatting, manage rules, select the rule and then edit it. At the moment, we're creating a logical test by saying, is the result of the counter function greater than zero? Well, we can actually get away with not using this part of our formula. Now I know I said that the formulas that you use for conditional formatting must be a logical test, 
so they must give a true or false result. Well, the numeric equivalent of false is zero, and the numeric equivalent of true is one. And if you remember, that's what this formula originally returned. It returned zeros and ones. So if I leave the formula as it is there and click on OK, and then click on OK again, you can see that the formula still works. So you can use greater than zero in your logical test formula if it makes more sense to you, but it isn't actually needed. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.